All right. So big picture, cardiovascular system. Big picture. Basically, the body is set up to control cardiac output and blood pressure, and it does this three ways. Remember that auto regulation is, re is referring to what's going on in the individual capillary beds. Local regulation. Each little capillary sphincter controls how much blood is allowed into the capillary beds depending on the local conditions, the levels of carbon dioxide, the levels of oxygen. And then we talk about neural regulation and hormonal regulation, we're talking about the body as a whole. All right, so one more time, back to the medulla oblongata. Right there in the medulla oblongata, you have the part of that that speeds the heart up, the part of that slows the heart down. Remember, heart sets its own rate. SA node sets the rate, but it can be sped up and slowed down. And then the vasomotor center, another set of neurons, or actually two sets of neurons, that control vasoconstriction and vasodilation. Okay, so we have, from the middle of Avangada, we have the sympathetic ANS, Acceleratory neurons, this would be our cardio inhibitory neurons. These would be causing vasodilation of these blood vessels, this would be causing vasodilation of these blood vessels. Now, why did I draw the sympathetic autonomic nervous system to the intervening the atria and the Right, because it increases heart rate as well as contractility. The PNS mainly just slows the heart. What sends input? into the medulla. How does the medulla oblongata know whether to speed the heart up or slow the heart down? Whether to cause vasoconstriction here and vasodilation there or not? Okay, so what we've been talking about essentially is output to these structures. From the, basically from the medulla oblongata, right? Now, what we're gonna talk about is the input. How does the medulla oblongata know which one of these neurons to send signals down? And remember, I've oversimplified this. Remember, you've got a neuron here stimulating the pre-ganglion neuron, stimulating the post-ganglion. Okay, all right. So we'll just but for simplicity purposes. Okay, all right. So the cardiovascular centers, the medulla oblongata, they get input from three different areas. They get input from baroreceptors. These are receptors that monitor blood pressure. You have chemoreceptors. These are receptors that detect the chemicals, the pH, the oxygen, and the carbon dioxide levels. So you have baroreceptors that are sending signals into the medulla oblongata. All of this stuff we are not consciously aware of. We're not, I can't tell you if my blood pressure is up or down right now. That's the problem with high blood pressure. It's the silent killer. Because unless it gets so high that you get a freaking headache, you, know, you can't tell. That, that information never reaches your cerebral cortex, right? Because that information goes from the barrel receptor into your brain stem, into the medulla oblongata. I could tell you what my blood pH right now is. I could tell you what my SATs are, my oxygen SATs are. That information never goes up here to the higher brain. That information goes into the brain stem, okay? Now, your, your higher brain, your higher brain centers, your limbic system, the emotional part of your brain, if I see chocolate ice cream, if I see, who's the guy that plays Morgan on, on uh, Criminal Minds? Uh, Shamar Moore? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. My heart rate's gonna go up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's something wrong with you. Exactly. You know. So that's the emotional part. The limbic system, the cerebral cortex, can also send signals to the medulla oblongata. Okay? All right, where are these baroreceptors? Where are these blood 
pressure sensors. Well, you've got one in what's called the carotid sinus, basically the beginning of the carotid artery. Obviously, that's going to that's going to detect blood flow to the brain. Which, Tammy, goes back to your point. It makes sure that enough blood is going to the brain. You have baroreceptors in the beginning of the aorta, which basically monitor blood flow to everything else. Is blood pressure high enough to perfuse all of the rest of the tissues? And then you've got some receptors right there in the right atrium that are basically monitoring how much blood is coming back. It's basically monitoring venous return. How much blood is going back to If blood pressure drops in these areas, then they're going to activate the sympathetic autonomic nervous system. They're going to make the heart beat stronger and faster. They're going to cause vasoconstriction over here and vasodilation over there. Exactly. So if blood pressure increases, in other words, if there's if those vaso, if those baroreceptors are detecting too much pressure, they're going, Arrow! then what happens is they send input to the CDC, the cardiovascular centers. And what that does is it decreases sympathetic stimulation and increases parasympathetic. Blood pressure is too high. We need to back everything off. Does that make sense? And so remember the vagus nerve, the cranial nerve number 10, that carries like 70 or 80 percent of the parasympathetic output. So it says slow the heart down, quit contracting it strongly. There's pressure's too high, decrease cardiac effort. And then it inhibits the vasomotor nerves. Those nerves that are sending signals out to cause vasoconstriction, it says decrease the number of signals, cause vasodilation. Let those muscles relax. And that causes the blood pressure to go down. Now, the opposite, of course, if blood pressure drops, those receptors, those barrel receptors go, I'm not taking anything, there's not enough pressure. And so they send fewer signals to the medulla oblongata because the pressure's dropped. And so the medulla's going, wait a minute, I'm not getting signals from the barrel receptors, I gotta do something. Make sense? And so it says, okay, decrease this, increase this. Speed the heart up. Make it contract more strongly. Constrict these blood vessels. Get that blood pressure back up. What about, remember that the whole purpose of the cardiovascular system is to perfuse the tissues, to get blood down to the tissues, drop off oxygen, pick up carbon dioxide. So you have chemoreceptors that monitor the chemicals in the blood, as well as the chemicals in the spinal fluid. Remember you have that blood-brain barrier. We can't get blood, we don't want blood to touch the brain tissue. So we have those choroid plexuses lined with the epidymal cells that extract fluid from the blood and create the CSF, the cerebral spinal fluid. And so you gotta monitor the chemicals in there as well as the chemicals in the bloodstream. So where do you have chemoreceptors? Basically the same place you have the baroreceptors in the carotid arteries and in the aorta. And then of course you have some in the medulla oblongata itself. Remember that the medulla oblongata has that fourth ventricle right back here. You've got the two lateral ventricles up here, you got the third ventricle right there, right here, kind of sort of. <laughs> and then you got the fourth ventricle kind of right back here. So you got CSF in here, and so it can monitor the chemicals that are in the CSF. So in these conditions, if oxygen decreases or carbon dioxide de increases, excuse me, or pH decreases, and so usually these things happen together. These three things happen together. When oxygen goes down. That means that the cells are metabolizing. They're using oxygen. They're producing carbon dioxide. And we know if CO2 goes up, pH goes down, right? Any of these three conditions can stimulate this response. If any one or all three of those things happen, those chemoreceptors send signals to the cardiovascular receptors, and the cardiovascular receptors say, activate the sympathetic autonomic nervous system. I've got to get more blood. I've got to increase the heart rate. I've got to increase the stroke volume. I want to produce uh, peripheral vasoconstriction to increase blood, uh, blood pressure to make sure the blood is getting to where it needs to go. Now, we'll come back to this when we talk about the respiratory system. 
Because if you're trying to get, um, if you're sending more blood to the area, if you're not putting more oxygen in the blood, you're kind of defeating your purpose. So the cardiovascular centers and the respiratory centers are right there. Well, remember that you have two areas that control respiration. I don't know this yet. You've got an area in the medulla oblongata and an area in the pons. We'll come back to that. But again, it's brainstem. When you increase cardiac output, when you stimulate heart rate, you increase oxygen, decrease carbon dioxide, and increase 